Bo Bankieku. Um, today is our second online lecture. Um, I much hope that you are uh, all safe and healthy. Uh, today we will continue the taxation topic that we have started uh, last week. And we have covered many points that are uh, related to the definition of taxes and other related concepts such as uh, tax base and tax incidence. Uh, we also have seen that everything that we earn and most of the things that we buy are taxed. Uh, for example, the income tax is deducted from our income and the sales tax is added to the price that we pay when we buy uh, the commodity. Uh, we also distinguished between general and selective taxes and we discussed the different types of tax structures uh, that include proportional tax, progressive tax and regressive tax. Uh, then we have also covered the meaning of tax incidence and how the tax burden is divided between consumers and producers. Uh, we also analyzed how the elasticity of demand and supply affects the tax incidence. And we ended the last uh, lecture by explaining the relationship between tax revenues and elasticity of uh, demand. Um, so, in current lecture, we will continue taxation topic uh, by focusing on the following points. Uh, first, we distinguish between the buying price and selling price of a commodity uh, and the relationship with the tax. And then, in second point, we will talk about the impact of taxes on uh, total surplus, which is the sum of uh, consumer surplus and producer surplus. Uh, then, we will talk about how taxes can lead to achieving a dead weight loss. Uh, with different degrees of price elasticity of demand. And finally, we will examine the cases uh, in which taxes will be uh, efficient. Um, now let's start the first point, which is uh, the comparison between uh, the buying price and the selling price. So what is buying price? It's the price paid by consumers, uh, which is also considered as uh, their willingness to pay at each quantity put. Uh, what about uh, the selling price? The selling price is the price received by sellers uh, and also it represents the minimum uh, supply price for each quantity sold. Uh, as we have explained in chapter 2 in face-to-face -face interactive compass lecture, uh, the market demand curve for a commodity represents the marginal social benefit, uh, MSP, and also, uh, the market supply curve for a commodity expresses the marginal social cost of producing this uh, good or commodity. Uh, as you know that in a competitive market, uh, the equilibrium occurs when the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. And this happens at the intersection point of the demand and supply curve. So, at the equilibrium point, we can find that the marginal social benefit on the demand curve equals the marginal social cost sorry, uh, in the supply curve. So this condition uh, is required to achieve allocative efficiency. So as I said, at equilibrium, the competitive market achieves allocative efficiency uh, as we have explained in chapter two. In the competitive market, the equilibrium price will equate between buying price and selling price. So here again, and uh, when we have a competitive market, uh, buying price will be equal to uh, the selling price. Now, let's see the impact of taxes on selling and buying prices. So, a tax will lead to creating a gap between the buying price paid by consumers and the selling price received by sellers. Uh, if you look at this graph uh, that I have explained last lecture, this, this graph shows uh, the impact of taxes on the market. Uh, in the case of uh, an elastic demand curve. Uh, when there is no taxes, the buying price equals selling price equals 20 pounds. Now, what happens if government imposes a tax of 2 pounds on each quantity or in each, on each unit uh, sold? Now, buying price should increase by the amount of the tax. So, consumers now are required to pay 2 more pounds for each unit they purchase. So now we will have a difference between selling price and buying price. The selling price will equal 20 pounds and 
the buying price will equal the selling price plus the amount of the tax so it equals 20 plus 2 so the buying price is 22 so we can conclude that the price consumers pay will be higher than the price received by uh, sellers which is the selling price so here this means that the difference between buying price and selling price is the amount of uh, the tax um, so as we know that the buying price represents the marginal social benefit and the selling price represents marginal social cost so in this case when a tax is imposed uh, then the marginal social benefit will exceed uh, the marginal social cost and this will affect both uh, producer surplus and consumer surplus and of course it will affect uh, the total market surplus as we will see now now uh, to see the impact of uh, imposing a tax on uh, the market efficiency uh, let's look at the graph uh, in this graph the demand curve d uh, shows the marginal social benefit uh, and supply curve uh, s shows uh, the marginal social cost as we, i have mentioned earlier uh, so now uh, to evaluate the impact of taxes we need to compare uh, the values of these variables before and after imposing the tax uh, these variables are uh, market price market quantity uh, consumer surplus producer surplus and total surplus uh, well uh, now let's see uh, the impact of uh, the tax on market efficiency uh, by comparing uh, the market conditions before and after imposing the tax so let's start by the case when we have no tax uh, in this case the demand curve d intersects with uh, with the supply curve uh, s and at the equilibrium here the market price equals 200 uh, pound uh, and this means that the price paid by consumers is 200 and also uh, the price received by producers is 200 so as I mentioned before, um, here in competitive market, uh, selling a price should equal uh, the uh, buying price at uh, the equilibrium. Then uh, with respect to uh, the quantity demanded here at equilibrium, uh, it equals 5,000 units per month. Now let's talk about uh, the consumer surplus. Uh, as you have studied before, consumer surplus uh, can be measured as uh, the area between the demand curve and the buying price. So in this case, it could be measured as uh, the summation of uh, areas A plus B plus H. Uh, and this appears as uh, the green triangle in uh, that figure. Uh, now let's look at producer surplus. Uh, and similarly, producer surplus can be measured as uh, the area between the supply curve and the selling price uh, and in this case as we can see in the figure uh, producer surplus is the summation of C plus D plus I and this is represented by uh, the red triangle in uh, this figure uh, finally the total surplus uh, before imposing the tax uh, which equals the, uh, the summation of consumer surplus and producer surplus will be maximized in this case. Now let's look at uh, the situation after uh, a tax is imposed. Uh, and here we assume that uh, a tax of uh, 20 pound is imposed on each unit sold. So this means that uh, when consumers buy uh, any unit, then they are required to pay and etc. 20 pound uh, to government. Uh, so now let's see how this will affect prices, uh, the amount traded, uh, consumer surplus, producer surplus, and total surplus, as we have explained in the case of uh, no tax. So first, the value of the tax should be added to uh, the minimum price at which firms are uh, willing to sell the product. So this will lead to uh, the creation of uh, a new supply curve which is labeled as uh, S plus tax. Then um, the new supply curve S plus tax intersects with, uh, with the demand curve um, and this will lead to a new equilibrium. 
So the new price here, here we should distinguish between the selling price and the buying price. So after imposing a tax, uh, the buying price increases from 200 pound to 210 pounds. Uh, for selling price, now it decreased from 200 pound before the tax to 190 pound after imposing this tax. So this difference between buying price and selling price uh, is the value of uh, this tax. Uh, so this tax here represents a transfer of resources uh, from private use to government use. Uh, concerning the um, new equilibrium quantity, here we can see that the quantity decreased from 5,000 units per month to uh, just 4,000 units uh, per month. Um, based on that, let's now compare uh, consumer surplus and producer surplus before and after imposing uh, the tax. So if we look at uh, the graph and the table, we can find that consumer surplus declines from area A plus B plus H before the tax to uh, the area A after imposing uh, the tax. And this happens because of uh, two reasons. Uh, first, because now uh, price increases from uh, 200 pound to 210 pound. Uh, and at the same time, consumers now purchase uh, a little amount uh, compared with uh, the case of no tax. So now uh, they decrease uh, their consumption from uh, 5,000 uh, units per month to just uh, 4,000 units. Uh, then uh, a part of uh, this decrease in consumer surplus is transferred to a uh, government as a tax collection. Uh, and here this is represented by uh, the rectangle B on the graph. Uh, another part of uh, consumer surplus is lost, uh, which is represented by uh, the small triangle edge. And then because this is lost, no one in the society benefit from uh, this loss. Uh, so we consider it as the, a dead weight loss or social loss. <clears throat> now let's move to uh, the producer surplus. Uh, and as we can see, uh, it declines from uh, area C plus D plus I uh, to a triangle C. And also, uh, this happens because of two reasons. Uh, first reason is that uh, now a producer sell uh, at a lower price uh, than before. And instead of selling the unit uh, for 200 pound, now they can sell it just for 190. Uh, and also, they uh, sell a smaller amount than before. They sell just 4,000 units instead of uh, 5,000 units. So now uh, they can um, generate lower revenues than before. Uh, also, a part of this decrease in producer surplus is transferred to government. And uh, this is represented by uh, the area D on uh, the graph. Uh, and another part is lost, uh, which is uh, dead weight loss, as shown on uh, the small triangle I. Um, so. Now the question is, why we didn't consider um, the um, transfer from consumer and producer surplus to government as a dead weight loss? Uh, this is because the surplus transferred to the government uh, will be spent on providing public goods like uh, education, like uh, national security, uh, like health services. Uh, so we all benefit from uh, these services. Uh, so as I said, transfer of resources from private use to public or government use shouldn't be considered as a social or dead weight loss. Why? Because as a society, we benefit from uh, these public goods and services. To sum up this part, uh, here we have differences between uh, consumer surplus and uh, producer surplus which results in differences in total surplus before and after uh, the tax uh, because as i said here consumer surplus because uh, declines because of uh, higher buying prices and uh, also because consumers buy a, a lesser amount uh, 
uh, and also uh, producer surplus decreases because now uh, producers re receive lower price and uh, sell uh, a lesser amount. Uh, so um, the part of this decrease in total surplus uh, will be transferred to government as a tax revenues as we have explained uh, earlier. Uh, and this uh, part uh, equals rectangle uh, P plus D. And another part of uh, this total surplus is considered as a dead weight loss uh, and uh, is represented by um, the, the sum of the triangles H plus I. Uh, well, uh, as we have seen that imposing a tax uh, will lead to market inefficiency. So the question is, what taxes be always inefficient? Uh, to answer this question, um, let's, let's talk about uh, the case in which tax will be efficient. Uh, for a tax to be efficient, it shouldn't create any dead weight loss. So, as we have said before, it's acceptable for us to transfer parts of our uh, surplus as consumers and as producers uh, to government uh, because government will use uh, these resources to finance its activities uh, through uh, providing us with uh, public goods and services and also uh, to redistribute the income and wealth uh, through government transfers. Um, so now taxes will be efficient in two cases, which are uh, when demand is perfectly inelastic or supply is perfectly inelastic. Uh, the question is why this happens? Why in these cases uh, the tax will be efficient? Uh, the answer is, a tax will be efficient if it will not lead to a decrease in quantity uh, demanded and sold. And as we have studied in uh, the previous lecture, in the case of uh, perfectly elastic, in, sorry, perfectly in elastic demand and perfectly in elastic supply, uh, the tax didn't change the quantity produced. Uh, so uh, in both cases, it will not create any dead weight loss. Uh, so, now to clarify the idea, uh, let's focus on uh, the elasticity of demand cases. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have talked about uh, the relationship between elasticity of demand and tax incidence, which is, means uh, how the tax burden is divided between sellers and buyers. Uh, and also, we talked about uh, the relationship between elasticity of demand and tax revenues. Uh, so, now uh, we are going to examine the relationship between elasticity of demand and market efficiency when a tax is imposed. And for this analysis, we also need to know how the tax burden is divided between uh, consumers and uh, sellers, uh, and also um, the impact of elasticity on revenue uh, is very uh, related here. As you have studied in principles of economics course, uh, and as I, as I mentioned uh, in the previous lecture, uh, we have five degrees of uh, price elasticity of demand, which are uh, perfectly inelastic, perfectly elastic, unit elastic, elastic and inelastic demand curves. So in each of these cases, we examine the impact of efficiency or we examine the impact of tax on efficiency. Uh, and in this case, case one, here we are talking about uh, the perfectly inelastic demand curve. So remember that in this case, when price changes, the quantity demanded remains constant. Why? Because usually this will happen when the commodity is extremely necessary, uh, like some medicine uh, such as insulin. So uh, as you can see in the graph uh, here, uh, price elasticity of demand is zero. Uh, so if a tax is imposed, and led to a rise in the price from six pounds to 12 pounds, uh, sorry, from uh, 20 pound to 22 uh, pound. Uh, so here, the consumers will not decrease their consumption uh, and they, they will continue with the previous level of consumption because uh, they can't decrease uh, uh, the amount they need from medicine. Uh, so uh, this means that uh, how the tax burden will be divided here. Uh, here, 
uh, the consumers will pay uh, the full or the entire tax. And in this case, tax revenue will be maximized. And also in this case, we don't have uh, any loss of efficiency. Why? Uh, because here uh, we don't have a decrease in the quantity demanded. So again, I sh we should emphasize on this point. When we don't have any change in the quantity demanded, then we can say that we don't have a dead weight loss. So uh, in the case of perfectly inelastic uh, demand curve, we don't have uh, a dead weight loss. So here the tax will be efficient. Now let's uh, move to case two uh, in which uh, the demand curve is perfectly elastic, uh, which means that uh, in this case, um, this commodity has many close substitutes. So if the price uh, it changes by a small uh, amount or increases uh, by a tiny amount, uh, this will lead to a huge decline in the quantity demanded. So now let's see how uh, the imposing of a tax of one pound affects efficiency in this case. Uh, as you can see in the figure before uh, the tax, the price is 10 pound and the quantity demanded uh, is 4,000 units per uh, week. So uh, now assume that govern government imposes a tax of uh, one pound on each unit uh, sold. Uh, so in this case, producers cannot increase the price. Why? Uh, because they know that uh, if they increase the price, consumers will shift to other uh, commodities because the commodity has uh, many close substitutes. Uh, this means that producers will try to avoid losing their consumers uh, by paying the entire tax uh, and they will sell the commodity at 10 pound uh, they will receive nine pound of them and one pound will be transferred to government as a tax collection. Uh, the problem is that uh, this tax increase the costs of producers. Uh, so some of them will not be able to provide the commodity at 10 pound. So the production will decrease from 4,000 uh, units to just 1,000 units per week. Uh, so what does this mean uh, or what is the implication of this on efficiency? Uh, if we compare the situation before and after imposing the tax, uh, let's compare uh, the producer surplus before and after imposing the tax. Uh, before the tax, producer surplus equals the submission of A plus B plus C because uh, this is the area between the supply curve and the selling price. Uh, now let's see uh, the surplus after imposing the tax. Here the new price is nine pound, the, new, the selling price received by producers. So producer surplus in this case uh, shrinks to the area A, uh, and then uh, part B will be transferred from uh, producers to government as a tax collection, and finally part C uh, is considered as a dead weight loss. Uh, because here no one benefit uh, from uh, this loss in uh, the production. Um, so here, because we have a dead weight loss, this implies that uh, we don't have efficient tax in this case. Now uh, let's move to uh, the other three cases of price elasticity of demand, uh, which are elastic, inelastic, and uh, unit elastic demand. Uh, so as you have studied before uh, in principles of economics, uh, demand will be elastic uh, at prices above uh, the midpoint of uh, the demand curve. Uh, and uh, if the price is below the midpoint of the demand curve, then the demand is inelastic. And finally, uh, at the midpoint of the demand curve, then the demand will be unit elastic. Uh, so without going into uh, details, um, so let's see how the impact of uh, the taxes will affect efficiency in these three cases. Uh, but bear in mind that uh, 
to uh, to evaluate the impact of taxes on efficiency let's see uh, if we have a decrease in quantity demanded uh, or not because a decrease in production and a decrease in uh, the quantity demanded means that we have added weight loss so let's start by the uh, case three which is uh, a unit elastic demand curve uh, a unit elastic demand curve means that uh, any percentage change in price will lead to exact percentage change in the quantity demanded. What does this mean? It means that if price increases by 1%, then the quantity demanded will decrease by 1%. So what happens in this case? Here, how the tax burden is divided between consumers and uh, producers. Uh, the tax burden will uh, be shared between them. Uh, and of course, as I said, we have a decrease in quantity demanded, which means that we have added weight loss. So in this case, we have a loss of efficiency. Uh, and we can say that uh, with uh, a unit elastic demand curve, um, the tax will be inefficient. Then with respect to uh, the inelast inelastic demand curve, uh, which is represented uh, by the case in which prices are below uh, the midpoint of the demand curve. Uh, here we have uh, any percentage change in prices will result in a smaller percentage change in quantity demanded, uh, which means that if prices increases by 1%, for example, then the quantity demanded will decline by a lesser amount than this one pound, say uh, by half a percent, for example. Uh, and uh, in this case, most of the tax burden will be paid by consumers, as we have explained uh, last week. Uh, and since uh, this, the tax here in this case uh, will lead to uh, a decrease in uh, the quantity demanded, so here we have added weight loss, uh, and we can say that uh, the tax is uh, inefficient. Finally, when the demand curve is elastic, um, and in this case, this happens when price is above uh, the midpoint of uh, the demand curve. Uh, so here, uh, any percentage change in price leads to a higher percentage change in the quantity demanded. Um, this means that if prices increases by 1%, for example, uh, quantity demanded will decrease by more than 1%, uh, say 2 or 3% uh, or more. Uh, in this case, uh, most of the tax burden will be paid by uh, producers, as I have explained uh, last week. Uh, so here we have a change or we have a decrease in quantity demanded, which means that uh, we have added weight loss uh, and uh, um, the tax is inefficient in this case. Uh, so we can stop at this point for this lecture uh, and next week inshallah uh, we will discuss uh, the trade-off between uh, equity and efficiency uh, and also we will talk about uh, other types of tax revenues uh, other than uh, taxation. Uh, so um, goodbye for now and see you next week.